filled out by Allah. Our topic tonight is uh, the Quran and the Moon, the Quran and the Moon, methodology for recitation of the Quran. And I'm writing the book at this time. I was in Mombasa in Kenya and over there I finished most of the book. There's a still bit, a little bit left to finish it. And since I left Mombasa, no time to write. <laughs> no time to write. I hope I'll be able to complete the book, inshallah, soon. Uh, the Quran and the Moon methodology for recitation of the Quran. But the good news for you here in Bristol, although you are small in numbers, is that we just received a shipment of all my books. So we have all my books now at the back, including the ones that have been newly published. And nobody else has got it in Britain so far. Tonight, for the first time, you have it here uh, in Bristol. We begin by directing attention to the names of the books which were sent down by Allah. He gave them names. One of them was known as the Torah. Another one was known as the Psalms, the Zabur. Another one was known as the Injil, the Gospel. But this one does not have a name. This last book does not have a name. This last book is called Quran, which is a recitation. I wonder why. Why this book is called a recitation? Why? 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 And that was called Torah, that was called Injil, that was called Zabur, but this is called a recitation. For us means a recitation. A book, therefore, to be recited. We read with our eyes, but we do not recite with our eyes. Reading and recitation are different from each other. We recite with our tongue. And this is a book to be recited. And the very first word that comes down in this book is recite, Ikra. So if that is not a message that is truly clear and plain as daylight, then we are blind. We are blind. Our primary first ob obligation towards this book, therefore, is recitation, not study. Recitation, not study. Recitation. Recitation is our first duty to the book. Studying comes after. Recitation comes first. And then they come to the very great surprise. If it is a recitation, well then who? is reciting. Whose recitation is it? And we begin now with Surah al -Qiyamah. And this is what Allah says. وَإِذَا كَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَ It is the First person plural. Let me use the first person singular. And when I have recited this book, you must follow that way of recitation. Is everybody comfortable with this? Huh? So this is. Allah's recitation. 
It is not just a Quran, a recitation. It is Allah's recitation. وَإِذَا كَرَأْنَاهُ And when I have recited this book, first of it, you must now follow that way of recitation. When did he recite it? When did he recite it? All through the year, the angel Jibra'il alayhi salam will bring wahi, wahi, or revelation, and it will be, it will be given to the heart of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But not in Ramadan. No. Something else in Ramadan. In Ramadan, the angel will come down to recite. But it's not the angel reciting. It is Allah who is reciting and he is using the angel. So when he says, when I have recited, he's referring to the angel coming down in Ramadan and reciting. This is what he meant by, when I have recited. And the angel will come down every night of Ramadan and recite the whole Quran. I may be wrong. I may be wrong. I don't have the proof. I'm just suspecting that the angel was reciting the whole Quran in Ramadan, including that which had not as yet been revealed. I may be wrong. So the angel would recite the whole Quran in Ramadan and complete the whole Quran in one month. And so the first sunnah, and it is a divinely ordained sunnah in reciting the Quran is to complete the recitation in one month. But if you do not know how to recite, you just take the shahada, you have not been a Muslim for 40, 50, 60, 70 years, no, no, no. You're just learning. Well, never mind. It may take you three months or four months, never mind. But you must finish the Quran. Don't stop when you start until you finish. But when you finish, you must start again. And when you finish, you must start again. And after you recited the Quran several times, and the words have become familiar to you, eventually, yes, you will be able to recite the whole Quran in one month. This is the divinely ordained sunnah to recite the whole Quran from cover to cover in Ramadan. Can I ask a question? Do you mind? You won't be angry with me? Okay, Bristol, let me hear. If you recited the whole Quran in Ramadan last Ramadan, put your hands up, let me see. Put your hands up, let me see. Oh, okay, that means you've got homework to do, Bristol. <laughs> you've got homework to do. This is your first duty to the Quran. Your first duty. Okay, now can I ask another question? Are you teaching your children to recite the Quran? Put your hands up and listen. And there you are. This lecture, therefore, is even more important for you. Even more important for you. Now, before we proceed, how did the angel recite the Quran? So that we must follow that method of recitation. Let me take you to Akhiru Zaman. You know Akhiru Zaman, or the end time. 
It is that time when the Dajjal will be at work and he will be testing us. And his, his test and trials or his fitna is the greatest that mankind will experience all through history. One of the most important of all. And it took me a long, long time to recognize how important this was. The Prophet prophesied, the time will move faster and faster. A whole year will pass like a month, a whole month like a week, a whole week like a day, a whole day like an hour, and a whole hour like the amount of time it takes to kindle the fire. Time will move faster and faster. Can I ask another question? You won't be angry with me. If you have the perception that time is moving faster and faster, put your hands up, let me see. Good, put your hands up. Is there anyone who does not perceive time moving faster? Put your hands up. MashaAllah. Anybody else? Only one? If you do not perceive time moving faster and faster, Put your hands up. What do you want? You born in Britain? Yes, I've been following instructions. Oh. Okay. I find it differently. Okay. I also, my hand was up until, until I started reciting the Quran as it ought to be recited. And guess what happened? Time stopped moving faster. Time stopped moving faster. The reason why time is moving faster and faster is because the Dajjal has corrupted our hearts. Even if you are a Sufi chef, <laughs> if you perceive time moving faster and faster, chef, your heart has been attacked. Your heart is no longer beating in harmony with the system of time that Allah has created. And that system of time operates all through the universe. That system of time has the moon at its heart. Because Allah says about the moon that he has given to it manazil. Manazil Stages of growth and stages of decline. That you might use the moon to count the years, to measure time. And so the moon is at the heart of the system of time in Islam. And this is the Jal's biggest problem. Biggest problem of all that the child has is the system of time that Allah has ordained. Why? Why is this the biggest problem? Let me hear you. Let me hear you. I have a lot of time tonight. My hearing is declining. I didn't hear you. Okay, anybody else? Why is this so difficult for the child? The system of time in which the moon is at the heart. Why? Uh, I feel it could be because that the months move around the season of year mm -hmm. in the lunar calendar. Okay. So you'll never be fixed in a. Um, you know, like the solar calendar, the Gregorian yeah. calendar. Things happen at the same time relevant to the season yeah. every year, so you just fix in a calendar. Yeah, he's pointing out to the fact that you need to use the sun for measuring time. You have the solar year in which you have the seasons. But when you use the moon for measuring time, you have a lunar year. And the lunar year does not coincide with the solar year. The lunar year is shorter than the solar year. 
Anybody else? Why is this system of time, which is based on the moon, so difficult for the Jaguar? Have you thought of asking? Because you cannot follow the moon? No, the Islamic calendar follows the moon. The Islamic calendar follows the moon, not only the Islamic calendar, the Hindu calendar, the Christian calendar, the Jewish calendar, except for those who follow monkey town. You know monkey town? Yeah. Anybody else? Yes? Do you follow the last time? Why is it so difficult? Because the moon follows the time that Allah gives. The moon follows them? The moon cannot be controlled by the jazz to do something in the hand of Allah. I don't know something, the acoustics in this, I can't hear what you are saying. All right, never mind. I won't bother asking questions anymore. The jazz means to rule the world. Did you hear that? Yeah. Why? Because he wants to claim to be the al Masih, the Messiah. And the Messiah will rule the world from Jerusalem. So the Jal has to rule the world from Jerusalem. How are you going to do that? In order for him to rule the world, he needs to get all of mankind in one global society, interconnected with each other. And so you have this monetary system of electronic money, everything interconnected with each other. You have one political system in the United Nations. You have one monetary system. You have one economic system. But he needs one universal system of time. One universal system of time. So that everything could operate like clockwork, you know, the, the trains operate in Switzerland. Like clockwork. Otherwise, your financial transactions all over the world are the press of a button. We go haywire unless you have one universal system of time. Can you do that with a lunar calendar? No, you. No, you, I can't ask you any questions anymore because I can't hear you guys. Right. No, you can't do that. What can you do with a system of time in which you have to wait until the 29th day of the month comes to an end and only then would you know whether the month will end at the end of the 29th day or whether it will continue for one more day. The schoolboys cannot tolerate this nonsense. What a stupid system, you schoolboys. But we say praise be to Allah that he's given us a system of time that John cannot swallow. It is the most formidable obstacle in his way in bringing about a universal society, a global society. If only our people had remained faithful to the moon. But all of us have abandoned the moon in Allah. If I ask what your age is, no one will give me his age. None will give me his age according to the moon. Everybody will give me his age according to the sun. Even though Allah has said, I gave you the moon, لِتَعَلَمُوا عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ That you might use the moon to count the end. So after this wake-up call, what is the price we pay when our heart is perceiving time moving faster and faster because the job has corrupted the heart? Answer? The heart is no longer in harmony with the system of time, so no, 
No will have difficulty entering the heart. That's why we have so many sheep and cattle in the world today. They have eyes and yet cannot see. Not only no, but something else. She fell. She fell. We're living now on the tip of the iceberg. 5G is coming. And when 5G comes, you will see how many cases of dementia, how many cases of Alzheimer, how many cases of mental illnesses, how many cases of loss of memory, even when our children. That's coming. And in order to protect yourself, you need Shifa. Shifa means healing. And this Quran heals. But the healing cannot come if your heart is not beating in harmony with the system of time in Allah's creation. And so how to bring the heart back so that your heart will be like his heart? He said, I don't perceive time moving faster. If he had not said it, I would have been the only one in the room. Now I have a one, two of us in this room. If you recite the Quran as it ought to be recited, the next time I come to Mr. Salah and ask, put your hands up if you perceive time moving faster. No one will put their hands up. No one. So now let's begin. This is how important this subject is. No, no, we can't begin it yet. Surah al And Allah says, Wa al Quran. It's as though the ayah is there, but we never saw it. There it's there in Surah al Islam. Wa al Quran. And when you recite the Quran, meaning when you recite the Quran as it ought to be recited, that way. When you recite the Quran as it ought to be recited, I will place between you and that godless world which did not believe in the hereafter. I will place a hijab. The hijab will separate you from them. And the hijab will be mastur, I will cover you and protect you. Not only that, your children are more important than you. So now let's begin with Allah's blessed name. If the angel recited the whole Quran in Ramadan, it then follows that the angel would have recited one portion every night. And when the angel recited, then the Nabi would then have to recite. And the angel would listen. That one portion in the Arabic language is called a juz. Juz. In the Farsi language, which is used all over India and Pakistan, they call it Sibara or Para. And the Arabic word is Jews. And the plural of Jews is Adza. So if the angel recited one Jews or one Sibara or Para? Sibara. Sibara. One Jews or one Sibara every night, then there will be 13. For the month. 30 for the month. So my question is, which was the first Jews recited? Which was the first Jews recited? Did the angel have the authority to divide the Quran? Well, then who has the authority to divide the Quran? Is it Tom, Dick, and Harry? Who has the authority to divide the Quran? Again, Surah Al-Isra. 
I listened to what Allah says. Quran and Farakinahu. We have divided this Quran. Litakrahu ala nasi ala muthil. That you might recite this Quran to the people at interval, for example, of one day. And so only Allah has the authority to divide the Quran, no one else but Him. Is that correct? Ah, I know the schoolboy is going to come, so let me explain to the schoolboy. When you are memorizing the Quran, you memorize them in small pieces, eh? That's not dividing the Quran, is it? So tell the schoolboy, don't worry about the one who's memorizing. We're talking about reciting the Quran. Only Allah has the authority to divide the Quran. No one else. And what does he say about those who do their own divisions? The division did not come from him. It came from them. Surah al -Hij. And this passage will shake you up. Wakul, say to them, O Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, inni anan nazirun mubeen. Tell them that I am a warner. And I have come to warn in a way, in a manner which is plain and clear as daylight, no ambiguity. Kama anzalna ala al-muqtasimeen. What is the warning? Tell them, give them this warning. And this warning has come from me, it has come down to a people called the Muktasimi, who are they? Al-Ladina Jalul Qur'an Indi, a people who divide the Qur'an as they choose. Who divide the Qur'an as they choose. Who break it up into bits and pieces, who cut it up, who chop it up. Chop up the Quran into bits and pieces. And what is the price they will pay for dividing the Quran when Allah has divided the Quran? For Abbika, oh my gosh, how powerful. For Abbika. Tell them, O oh Muhammad Islam, by thy Rabb, لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ That I will question every single one of them for what they have done to this Quran. This is the mother of all warnings. Be careful. Don't go about chopping the Quran and dividing it as you wish when Allah has already divided the Quran. So how has he divided the Quran? Answer? He divided the Quran into surahs and a surah is a wall. Only he can build the walls. You are not allowed to build any more walls in the Quran. I think I've made the point by now, I don't have to keep on repeating and repeating and repeating. So if after I have spoken with simplicity and clarity and you still don't understand, you know what Malcolm would say? Malcolm would say, that's not my problem, that's yours. <laughs> Malcolm would say, that's not my problem, that's yours. If I speak with simplicity and with clarity, and you still don't answer, understand, it's not my problem, it's yours. So now then, which is the first juz? A 
apart from Surah Al-Fatihah, which has to be recited, every time you recite the Quran. This is why Allah says, Sab'an min al-Muthani wal Quran al kareem So every time you recite the Quran, you must recite the Fatihah. So now the first juice will be? That's right. It will be Surah Al-Baqarah. The whole of Surah Al-Baqarah. But why would Allah place the longest surah of all at the beginning? 286 verses. And all the long surahs are at the beginning. Al-Baqarah, long. Ali Imran, long. Al-Nisa, long. Al-Ba'idah, long. Al-A'raf, Al-Anam, long. Al-A'raf, long. And why has he placed at the end only short, 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 short surah? Some of them only three ayat. Let me hear you. We have no energy at the start of the month. We have no energy at the start of the month. I still can't understand. Can I, I, I can't. Come yeah, 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 come, come close to me. Come close to me. What did he do? See, we have more energy at the start of the month. Ah, yes, mashallah. When the moon is young, you start the Quran when you see the crescent moon. This is the beginning of the month. And they question thee about the Hilal. Hilal is the crescent moon. Tell them that that Hilal is there to measure time for the system of time and the most important function of all for the system of time is to determine the day of the Hajj and this system of time delivers that knowledge the most important one of all is not when to catch your aeroplane that's not the most important one the most important one of all is to perform the Hajj. And he has given us the crescent moon to measure time and also to perform the Hajj. So with the crescent moon we begin the month. And when the moon is young and the month is young, Allah wants us to live with the moon and so he wants us to be young he wants us to marshal all our resources all our strength to make the best effort at the beginning of the month in the process of living with the moon your heart will return to the system of time in which the moon is centrally located. And so on the first day, he recites Surah Al-Baqarah. But that's not the only reason why. That is not the only reason why. The longest Surah of all is at the beginning of the Quran. What's the other reason? I have someone to help me out. The thing is, it opens up your mindset. Okay. Because the first two verses, you want to say, that is, Allah, that he created the Quran, which means this book is, there is no anything wrong with it. Okay. Alright, anybody else? Why is the longest surah of all at the beginning of the Quran? Why? Is it because the surah is a summary of the whole Quran? Okay. Surah yeah. Summary of the Quran. Okay. Uh -huh. So the ayah that says that after the difficulty comes ease, okay. can be said to be true as an example. Uh, right. Anybody else? Because of Ayat al Huh? Because of Ayat al Kursi. Okay. No, I think you're guessing now. Anybody else? Okay. 
He has given us the longest surah of all at the beginning of the Quran to test you. To test you. To see whether you will respect the walls which he built or whether you will build your own walls. And guess what we did? Shall I tell you? Shall I tell you? Or you already know? <laughs> you already know me. I don't have to tell you. I don't know who did it. I don't know who did it. And you don't know who did it. A very mysterious person who did it. But what he did was manifestly sinful. He built two walls in Surah al -Bakar. Two! That Allah did not build. And Allah says, وَوَرَبِّكَ لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُ مَجْمَعِينَ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ I'm going to question every single one of them for what they did to this Quran. At 141, ayah number 141 of Al-Baqarah, he built a wall. At ayah 252 of Al-Baqarah, he built another wall. This was a bricklayer who went to work in the Quran. At the 91 of Surah to Ali Imran, he built another wall. And this was sinful. This was manifestly sinful. And this did not come from Allah. Because Allah built different walls. And so now we've covered and covered, I hope, without any confusion in your minds, that we have strayed and strayed significantly from the way that Allah recited the Quran. And maybe that's why we're in the message which we are today, where everyone put their hands up. Yes, I do perceive time moving faster and faster. So on the first day, we recite Surah Al-Baqarah. Even if you do not understand what you are right reciting, never mind. Never mind. Go ahead and recite it. And you can, in, in addition to the recite, reciting the Quran, you also study the Quran. But while you're reciting that, you must not stop to go to some translation. Don't interrupt. Don't interrupt the translation, the recitation. Ah, yes, sometimes you will come to an ayah and you might want to repeat it twice, three times, never mind that. That is for those who are understanding what they are reciting. And then on the second day you recite Surah to Ali Imran. And then on the third day Surah to Nisa, and on the fourth day Surah to Ma'idah, and on the fifth day Surah Al-An'am and on the sixth day, which just ended, Surah Al-A'raf and tonight in Bristol. MashaAllah, we are on the seventh night. And this is the first stop. This is the first stop when you're reciting the Quran. Manazil. The first stop is on the night of the seventh. Why? Why does Allah stop us at this point? Because he says, and he has repeated it six times in the Quran, six times, that he created the Samawat and the earth in six days. So if we are to return to the system of time that Allah has ordained, on the seventh night, our hearts must return. And he is watching the heart. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَقُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ Allah is watching your heart. Does this heart on the seventh night, does this heart recall that Allah created the Samawat and the earth in six days? Or is this heart in a state of ghafla? Other more important things to think about. 
This is the heart that will return to the system of time. On the seventh night, he stops us. It's a halt, and I'll explain to you how, how he stops us. And then, when he stopped, when he created everything in six days, in the Bible they say he rested on the seventh. He rested on the seventh. And in the Quran Allah says that he was on the arsh, on the seventh. But this was so important a moment that in that law that he gave, to those who came before us, the Ten Commandments. He gave them the law of the Sabbath. That on the Sabbath, you're not allowed to work. Six days you can work, but on the seventh day, you must stop working. You must rest and you must pray. He didn't give it to us. No. He gave us Yawmul Jum'ah and on Yawmul Jum'ah he gave us the Salatul Jum'ah but he says when you finish with the Salat get back to work so we don't have a Sabbath day and I say to the Christians and I say to the Jews I'm jealous of you fellows I am jealous that you have the law of the Sabbath and I don't have it. But Allah has given me other things to compensate. So how does he stop it? How does he arrest us on the seventh day? Answer, nothing happens in this Quran by accident. Nothing happens by accident. I wish Islamabad could learn that lesson. <laughs> yes. Nothing happens in this Quran by accident. On the seventh day, we have to recite Surah Al Anfal. All the previous surahs were long, 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 long surahs. But Al Anfal is short. And the one that comes after Al Anfal is long. So why is an Anfal shot? <coughs> Could it be by accident? No, tell the school why. No. Nothing happens by accident. But not only is an Anfal shot, but something else to arrest our attention. And that is that the surah which comes after Al Anfal is the only surah of the Quran which is not beginning. With Bismillah rahman rahim Oh yes, we know that there are 114 surahs in the Quran. We know therefore that every surah begins with Bismillah rahman rahim so therefore there will be 114. We know that in Surah Al-Nam, surat, uh, surat, uh, Namal. It occurs twice because of the letter written by Suleiman alayhi salam, which began with Bismillah al-Rahman. Yeah, we know that. But then, if one surah of the Quran is not to begin with Bismillah al-Rahman, why this one? Why this one? Why not another one? When these two are put together, there is a difficult word in English. When they are juxtaposed, put together, then we are arrested, our attention is arrested. And we say that the reason why Allah has made Al Anfal short and no Bismillah Rahman Rahim in at Tawbah is number one. Because he wants us to combine these two surahs as our Jews for the seventh day. And number two, because he wants to arrest our attention that we should reflect over the fact that Allah created creation in six days and on the seventh he was on the action. And Allah knows better. If we are wrong, 
we invite our critics to correct us. And so on the eighth day, we now recite two surahs. Surah to Yunus and Surah to Hud. And on the ninth day, two. Surah to Yusuf and Surah to Rahm. And on the tenth day, two. Surah to Ibrahim and Surah to Hij. But now on the eleventh day, he arrests us again. On the seventh day, because one week has ended, on the eleventh day, because our Prophet said, we are an unlettered people, we don't know how to read and to write, and for us the month is comprised of this, and this, and this. This is what he did. This is what he did. So ten, and ten and ten, which means one third and two thirds, and then the whole. All through the month, this is important. Sorry, all through the year, this is important. But in one month of the year, supremely important, namely Ramadan. Ramadan, yes, Ramadan. So when ten days have ended, one third is now finished. So on the eleventh day we are arrested. So that we will reflect over the fact not only has one week ended, but now one third of the month has ended. Nobody does that anymore. We only concern about January and February and March and April. And we have lost contact with the moon. And so on the eleventh day, he gives us a long surah, surah to Nahal. Surah to Nahal is a long surah for two reasons. He wants us to recite only one surah on the eleventh day, surah to Nahal, so that we mark one third of the month has ended. But also because on the twelfth day, he wants the two sisters to remain together. Who are the two sisters? Surah Al-Isra and Surah Al-Kaf. Surah Al-Kaf is the surah, as they say in French, the surah par excellence of Akhil Zaman. And you cannot study Surah Al-Kaf without Surah Al-Isra. Surah Al-Isra is the key to Surah Al-Kaf. Surah Al-Kaf tests you, oh yes, to see whether you have insight. Insight is a lovely word in the English language, insight. People of Basra, uh, very difficult for someone of insight to be born. I don't know much Urdu, but I do, I did memorize some of Iqbal. And Iqbal said, Hazaro uh, Sal Nargis Apni Benuri Peruti Hai. For thousands of years, this flower called Nargis has been weeping. There's no one to admire her. Correct translation? But in Mushkin se hota hai chaman me deeda our peda. It's so difficult in this garden for a deeda our to be born. A deeda our, a man of insight. A man like Khidr alayhi salam. So insight is what you need to study Surah al kaf of the Qur'an. And the Surah will help you most of all is Surah Al-Isra. And so Allah wants to keep these two Surahs together. So he gives us one Surah on the eleventh day so that these two will be combined on the twelfth day. So we had one stop on the seventh day and we had one stop on the eleventh day. And now we come to the third stop. On the twelfth day we have Al-Isra and Al-Kaf and on the thirteenth day we have Maryam Mataha and on the fourteenth day we have Al-Anbiya and Al-Hajj and on the fifteenth day we have Mu'minun and Surah Al-Nur. When 
the 14 day has come to an end. In Urdu, Chauri Kachan. When the 14th day has come to an end and the 59th commences, it's the full moon. It's the full moon. And there will be more in the Quran on the full moon. We know that when Nabi Muhammad Islam, arrived in Medina, they sent Al Badru Alayna. Al Badr. The full moon has come upon us. That's how they described him. But first, the full moon is a time of maximum light. And therefore, he gives us Surah to Noor, the Surah of Light. But the moon doesn't have any light of its own. The moon gets the light from the sun. And so we are forced to think. Allah sent down the Quran to a people who think. They call me at the Fakkaroon. And that eminent scholar, Dr. Muhammad Iqbal, he said, and in my old age, I now agree with him. Yeah. He said, this Ummah stopped thinking 500 years ago. I agree with him now. Yeah, even with an Oxford education, we still cannot think. This all must stop thinking 500 years ago. How come? Where does the moon get her light from? And how come the light is so graded and calibrated that it goes slowly, slowly, slowly from a percent moon until it becomes a quarter? That's where it is tonight. Look up in the sky. And then it goes on becoming bigger and bigger and becomes a full moon. Who is the architect who designed it like this? And then having become a full moon again, it begins to decline as slowly as it grows. So on the night of the full moon, we should be reflecting reflecting on Allah's creation, how come this moon became a full moon? So he gave a surah to Noor, which is a surah of light, on the 15th day. And that was our third stop. The 7th day, the 11th day, and then the 15th day. And as we stop on these points of time, the heart is beginning to be locked into the moon. Is that so difficult to understand? You are reciting the Quran this way so that your heart will be locked into a system of time in which the moon is centrally located. Is that so difficult to understand? The child doesn't want that to happen. He wants you to forget the moon. So you can enter into one system of time which can be universalized, globalized, like the monetary system, like the political system, like the economy. One godless global order of sheep and goats where thinking people have no place to survive. They call it globalization. And then comes the 21st day. And the 21st day, remember, he did this, and then he did this, and then he did this, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So when the 21st day comes, the 21st night, it means the two have ended, two thirds have ended, and only one third now remains. This is important for us as we measure measure the passage of time over one lunar month that we have only one third left in the month but this is particularly important in the month of ramadan why because in ramadan it is in this last one third that allah sent down the quran 
And that night in which he sent down the Quran was so important a night for him that he makes it a night of celebration. Allah celebrates the revelation of the Quran. How does he celebrate the revelation of the Quran? He calls it the night of Qadr. And he celebrates, you won't believe this, he celebrates by sending down the angels. More than that, he also sends down Jibra'il alayhi salam. And he sends them down for everything he requires them to do. You have been making dua. You are in debt. You want to get out of debt. Who is not in debt today? Maybe a student loan. Maybe a loan to buy a house. Maybe a loan to buy a Mercedes for the men's for the car. Whatever we and then the debt kept on mounting and mounting and mounting, and you're now stuck in debt. And you want to get out of that, and you make it into a Your mother might be stricken with cancer. And this is your mother. And you're making dua and dua and dua and dua and dua. Oh, you might want a wife, you can't get a wife. Shay, can you help me get a wife? <laughs> you make it dua, I want a wife. Or you might be a mother. Divorce with a little daughter, no one to maintain her because the father has disappeared. And you are now on the street looking for a job. You have to pay the, the rent for the house, you have to pay this, you have to pay that. And when a single woman is on the street looking for a job, the sharks might even shop. And so you make him to her, well, I, I ask you for a husband. And you're making this to her all through the year, but on the night when you should be making it, you're sleeping. The night of Qadr. The night when Allah is celebrating. This is the night you should be asking. He said, look for it on the odd nights of the last ten, the odd night. But you, when the angel comes to give you what you've been asking for, the angel finds that you started Ramadan on the wrong day. Because instead of looking at the moon, you followed Saudi Arabia. So what, go, go let ask, ask Saudi Arabia to solve your problem for you. Don't ask me. Don't ask me to solve your problem. Go ask Saudi to solve your, solve your problem. This is the night for Allah to answer your dua and give you what you want asking for. But I have a secret to share with you. The Quran says it explains all things, right? Tibyan and Likul Lishay. So although the Prophet said Islam, look for it on the odd nights. I want to share with you my view. It is possible. Let me choose my words carefully now. It is possible from a careful study of the location of all the surahs of the Quran to locate which is the night of Laylatul Qadr. We'll stop, I have nothing more to say. So on this 21st night, Allah gives a Surah Al-Fusilat to recite. And in this Surah, He tells us what the angels can do when they come down. Inna ladheena qalu rabbuna Allah, thumma istaqamu. Those who declare our Rabb is Allah and then they affirm, like Malcolm, like Malcolm, 
The Lord of God is my Lord and I am remain firm with that regardless of the price I have to pay. Now that's a plan. I stand for the truth regardless of the price I have to pay. That's a man. Not the one who says, see, I can't do that. My business might collapse. You might put my name on a no-fly list. They might say I'm a terrorist. Those are schoolboys. But the one who stands up for the truth, regardless of the price I have to pay, ah, no, that's a man. And that was Malcolm. That's why I have so much love for him. Inna ladina qalu rabbun Allah thumma saqamu. Allah says, tatanazzalu alayhim al malaika. The angels come down on such people. Allah takhafu wa la takhzanu. That they have no cause for fear, they have no cause for me. And it's, it's, it's unbelievable that this is in the Quran. Listen. The angels will come down to say, wa abshiru il jannati allati kuntum tu'adun. We recite it, but it doesn't really stop. The angels come to give you the good news, you're going to Jannah. This coming, this will not be communicated to you in so many words. It will be communicated to your heart to give your heart some sakina. So this is what the 21st night is about. And this is why Allah arrests us one more time on the 21st night. It's an important night of the month. So we had the 7th, we had the 11th, we had the 15th, we had the 21st, and now there's one more, 23rd. Why the 23rd? Because there's one week left. There's one week left. And in that one week that is left, by divine design there will be momentous change in the sky the moon will go and the stars will replace the moon if only you could understand why if only you could fathom the divine wisdom why the first reason of course is that the moon was go in a dark night was come. So when the new moon is born, you could see a new moon. That's the easy reason. But there's another reason why the stars take over from the moon at the end of the month. On the 23rd night, we recite Suratun And guess what is the surah after that? Surah Al-Qamar. Mm -hmm. Surah Al-Najm, or the surah of the star. And then Surah Al-Qamar, or the surah of the Noor. And they are side by side to tell you that the stars will now replace the moon in the sky. The starlight will replace the moonlight. But the deeper meaning is that when you recite the Qur'an this way and you have been locked with the moon all through the month, every month, month after month after month after month, that this will now prepare you to study the Qur'an. Let me repeat it. I feel embarrassed that at my old age I now realize what I should have learned before. You cannot study the Quran as it ought to be studied unless you are reciting the Quran as it ought to be recited. What is the connection between the stars and studying the Quran? You may have been listening to me, so if you have been listening to me, don't answer, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs>
<laughs> if you have not been listening to me, let me hear you. What is the connection? Allah takes away the moon at the end of the month and replaces it with the stars. Allah says, we are good. Not you, not you, you try. You tell me. Let's hear. Why? Stars are suns, they, they generate their own light. Stars are suns who generate their own light. They generate their own light, okay. Light, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, anybody else? Why? Why has Allah taken away the moon at the end of the month, the lunar month, and replaced the moon with the stars? Why? We give this surah to Najm, followed by surah to Kamar, to tell you that now the moon will disappear and the stars will replace the moon in the sky. And this is to prepare you for study of the Quran. How does it prepare you to study the Quran? Okay, if you'll be listening to me, tell me the answer. Navigation. Yes. Navigation connecting dots. That's right. If you're listening. <laughs> Surah al of the Quran. I listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about how to study the Quran. And I take an oath, I swear I take an oath by the positions in which the stars are located. وَإِنَّهُ لَقَسَّمٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمٌ And this is no ordinary oath, no ordinary qasam. This is a tremendously important oath. This is the mother of all oaths. وَإِنَّهُ لَقَسَّمٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمٌ إِنَّهُ إِلَى قُرْآنٌ كَرِيمٌ فِي كِتَابٍ مَقْنُونٌ Surely, this is a Qur'an which is Kareem, which is noble. And if you devote yourself to the Qur'an, you will be raised to a position of humility. And this is the Qur'an which is Kareem, which is generous. It keeps on giving and giving and giving. Fi kitabin maknoon, and this Quran, this recitation, this divine recitation is located in a book which is protected. What's the connection? Answer. You cannot study the Quran except the way you study the stars. You cannot study the Quran except the way you study the stars. Hmm? And so at the end of the month, he takes the moon out of the sky and he replaces it with the stars to teach you. And as you keep on reciting the Quran, reciting the Quran, reciting the Quran every month, one day eventually you will start to study the Quran. And when you study the Qur'an, you have to study the Qur'an the way you study the stars. You don't study the stars by beginning with Surah Al-Baqarah and then Surah Ali Imran and then Surah al -Nis. That's Washington's way. Because they don't know any other way at Temple University when they get their PhDs. You don't study the Qur'an that way at Temple University. <laughs> you study the Quran the way you study the stars. Did you see how is this star connected with that star? And how is that star connected with this one and this one to form a pattern? And that is a work of insight, of basal. And it's not so. 
in the supermarket. Allah gives his nur to whomsoever Allah wishes to give. And there's a shortage of nur, I could tell you that in Islamabad at this time. So this was the 23rd, the 23rd night. When the 29th day of the month has ended, if the moon is seen, you will have only a short amount to finish the Quran. And there's small surahs. And if the 29th moon, the, 20, the moon is not seen, and you have to recite the Quran one more day, it's just a little bit. So at the end of the month, when the moon is old, the month is old, and you're tired, Allah gives you short surahs. Make it easy for you to complete the Quran. If you recite the Quran this way, then I say to you, eventually, you will no longer have the perception of time moving faster. And yet faster, I pray that Allah may bless all those who have come tonight and visitors to listen to me. I've been traveling for six months continuously now before coming to you here in Bristol. Uh, but I have some more lectures in London. If I could come to Bristol, you could come to London uh, on the 9th at London University. Um, there is a subject of the Quran, the methodology for study of the Quran, and we'll connect some of the stars on the 9th uh, at London University. Uh, you go to my YouTube channel and you see the, uh, the link for uh, that lecture. On the 10th, I have to go to the uh, Islamic Center of England, the Shia Center, there's a con conference on Muslim unity, and I am one of the speakers. And on the 11th, I'm going to repeat this lecture if you want to come back again. Uh, it's Midtown, it's London. Go to my YouTube channel, you see. I'm going to repeat this lecture and then continue to methodology for study of the Quran. وَبَلَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنْ نَعْنَكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيرُ عَلِيمُ تِرْعَ عَلِينَ يَا مُدَانَ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ رَحِيمُ بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَرْحَبُ الرَّحِمِينَ آمين Any questions? You stay up. This methodology which you actually explained to us very, very clearly, so I'll come down to that. Is this methodology rooted in authentic tradition or is it something that's actually relatively new? What we have is something which is defective, something which is sinful. And I already pointed out that to you. I don't have to repeat it. You have a choice. If you want to remain with the existing system, then by all means continue with the existing system. But if you do that, you can take my word, your heart will continue to beat faster and faster. The test of the pudding is in the eating, even in the system. And the validity of the system of recitation, which I have explained, the validity is if you no longer perceive your heart moving faster and faster. So I don't need any mufti to give me a fatwa declaring this to be correct. No. Yeah. He wants to get more detail about end of time. Oh, no, 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 not for now. <laughs> Where are you from? Huh? And your parents? Sudan. Jamaica? Sudan. Or oh, Sudan. Any Caribbean people here? No one from the Caribbean, I'm all alone. Oh my. Yeah, man, this taken away from He has a Caribbean accent, yeah. Yes. Which island? Which island? Jamaica. Jamaica. <laughs> okay. You can hear that in an accent. Uh, any, yes? For a little while I've wondered about uh, you know, Yom Juma, the day of Juma. We make it on Friday every week. But if the months are changing in the lunar calendar, how is that possible that 
can fall on a Friday of the week. No, no, no. The Sabbath, the Sabbath day is Saturday, the day that comes after Friday, the Sabbath day. And they have the Sabbath day, we don't have it. I come here. They have the Sabbath day. Whether they're following the Sabbath day or not is a different matter. What we have is not the Sabbath day. What we have is at the end of six days, we are told in the Quran six times, six times in the Quran, that Allah created the Samawat and the earth in six days. So on the seventh day, regardless of what day of the week it is, on the seventh day, this heart must remember that Allah created the heavens and earth in six days. Yes, any more questions? Uh, just want to know your view about the, there's a theory of flat earth, uh, uh, what is your view about that? Right, we hold that for a little while. Any questions on today's lecture? Do you know what people... Uh, you ask a question already, a second question or first? First. First, first go ahead. Do you know when people start the month of Ramadan, they, they follow, for example, Pakistan or Saudi Arabia, is that, why don't they look out for their own window? We have like to look for the moon every month, not just Ramadan. Otherwise, forget it, you wasted your time coming here tonight. You have to recite the Quran once a month. So every month you will begin the Qur'an with the new moon. And which new moon you're going to begin with? Is it the new moon that they see in Timbuktu or in Buenos Aires? Huh? When will you think? It's the moon above your head. That's the moon. So if they want to follow a Saudi moon, tell them go ahead. You belong to them, you don't belong to us. We want a different system of time. If people want to be jahil, let them be jahil. You should not be jahil, you should be people of knowledge. If you follow this system, then you will no longer perceive time moving faster. That's the proof. Only one man here in this gathering, only this one. He's the only one who is not perceiving time moving faster. Why? Because he's following this system of reciting the Quran. Now the Christian has to tell me, the Hindu has to tell me, the Jew has to tell me, the Buddhist has to tell me, what do you have to solve this problem? This is what I have. I have the Quran. Okay? Quran didn't come from me alone. If you choose not to accept the Quran, tell me what you have. Okay? Yes. You say you recite the Quran. Do you think is it better to have knowledge before reciting? Because in Islamic country, sometimes they take advantage and they get money when they recite for people. This has to start from age seven. From age seven. So age 10, the child is learning to recite the Quran, even to memorize the Quran. The child doesn't have any understanding of the Quran. The child is not studying the Quran at that age, no. By the time the child reaches the age of 10, the child should be reciting the whole Quran, okay? But don't force the child, let the child love the Quran until eventually you get your child to recite the whole Quran. And of course, the best time is in the morning. The best time. The Prophet would manage his time so well that he would never go to sleep until he finished his juice for the day. Never sleep without completing his juice for the day. Sometimes I can't do it. But this is not by design, this is by accident. Hmm? That the next day I have to do two instead of one. But he was a master of management of time. I am not that master. So never mind, you cannot finish it one day, you have to do it. The next day, do it again. 
But the best way is to complete your Jews every day. If you're not, even Arabs, I found reciting the Quran and they don't understand what they're reciting. Because they are Arabs, but they don't speak Arabic anymore. If Nabi Muhammad were to return and they speak to him in Arabic, he wouldn't understand what they say. <laughs> the Prophet would not understand what this Arab is saying because he's not speaking Arabic. He's speaking dialects of the Arabic language, more called slang language. <laughs> Algerian Arabic and Moroccan Arabic and this Arabic and the other Arabic. But not the Arabic that the Prophet could have. Understand that the Quran is not slang language. So if you do not understand what you're reciting, of course, you have to make the effort to understand the reciting. But that comes after. Reciting the Quran comes first. Understanding the Quran comes second. Studying the Quran comes third. Any more questions? between fasting the 13, 14, and 15 and the moon? The, the fasting of the, the call the ayam will be the 13th, when the 13th day has ended, not the 13th day, the 13th day has ended, then you have the first night of white. When the 14th day has ended, when the 15th day has ended. These are the three days you fast, the sunnah, of the Prophet but this is not connected with the recitation of the Quran. No. Okay, we attend to flat earth now. No more questions? Okay. The people who hold the view that the earth is flat do so because of the understanding of ayat of the Quran. It is their interpretation of the Quran. Okay? And uh, when we interpret the Quran, uh, then uh, only Allah can confirm that an interpretation is correct. Um, I extended an invitation to those who believe that the earth is flat. I say to them, if the earth is flat, it could not be flat infinitely. It could not be infinitely flat. It has to end somewhere. It has to end somewhere. It cannot be infinitely flat. And if the earth is flat, it has to be flat where I'm standing. I don't have to go to the North Pole for it to be flat. If it's flat where I am standing, and if it's not infinitely flat, I said, would you join with me? Let's travel to the end of the earth where it's flat, where it ends. Please join with me, all those who are convinced that the earth is flat, please join with me. And let us travel from where we are standing. Let us travel to the end of the earth. If we keep on traveling in one direction and we return to where we started, what would be the implication? My teacher did it five times. He left Karachi, traveling west, and returned to Karachi from east. And he did it five, five times. <coughs> so he was able to provide five proofs that <laughs> there was no end to the earth. So the earth cannot be flat, but if you still believe it is flat, then please join me, let's travel to the end of the earth. Any more questions? If not? Yeah. What's the relationship between Shaitan and the Jah? What's the relationship between Shaitan and the Jah? Yeah. Yeah. 
shaitan is Iblis. And the shayateen are jinn who are kuffar and who follow Iblis. No jinn has been created evil. A jinn possesses a free will. This is my lecture on Saturday in London, Saturday. A jinn has a free will to choose to either reject or to worship. Uh, and a jinn has capacity for knowledge, to pursue knowledge independently. And so on judgment day, a jinn will be judged by Allah and go to Jannah or to Jahannam. But not the Jah. He's not a jinn. No. Nor is he a human being, although he will appear as a human being. The Jal is not a human being, he will appear as a human being. Then what is he? Anybody? Huh? Don't be afraid. What does the Quran say about him? What does the Quran say? Be afraid. Huh? Yes, That's right, but I don't know why they're afraid. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّا سُلَيْمَانِ وَأَلْقَيْنَا عَلَى كُرْسِيهِ جَسَدٍ ثُمَّ أَنَامٍ قَالَ رَبِّكْ فِرْلِي وَهَبْ لِي مُلْقًا لَا يَنْبَغِي لِأَحَدٍ مِنْ بَعْدِي إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ اللَّهِ this is a lecture on Saturday. Don't ask me to deliver it tonight. Please don't ask me to deliver it tonight. Okay. Come to London on Saturday. The Quran, the Jah, the Quran, and the Jasad. It's a lecture on Saturday in London. Okay. Thank you very much. My books at the back. You can bring them up to me and I'll give you the uh, autograph them for you. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنْ دَعِينَكَ تَسْتَمِيرَ عَلِيمٍ وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا يَا مُرْدَانَ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ بِرَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ وَرَحِيمٍ آمين Thank you Where were you born? Where were you born? I was born in Iraq Oh, in Iraq? Okay You could? Okay